So what is going on YouTube, my name is Mehul and welcome to your 11th tutorial for Ionic development. And in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how we can implement login functionality in our simple login app using Firebase. Now Firebase, if you are not familiar with this, this is actually a tool, a great project from Google and it consists of a lot of tools which you can just use straight away out of the box without configuring any sort of servers or any kind of hassle like that. So technically you could create now apps just with JavaScript which would take care of your authentication part as well without even touching server code. And the free tire of Firebase is also extremely helpful and extremely good. It would be quite sufficient for you and you would probably not hit it at least in your demos so yeah for the most part it's more than enough for even small to medium projects and you can then therefore expand as you need so anyways getting back to the project what we want to do right now if we take a look inside terminal what we want to say is ionic serve which would start our project and uh, we have just created a very basic layout of register and login only so if we take a look this Firebase would allow us to add a project. So let's just add a project first. And let's just say this is, uh, let's just say this is something like test project. And here goes our Ionic app. So let me just change this to India. And uh, not Indonesia, but India. Right there, and let's just create this. So it would just create a new project for us right and to make use of firebase in our ionic project what we're going to do is actually make use of this angular fire now this angular fire 2 is essentially the wrapper for angular 4 right so you would need this you wouldn't actually technically need this to work with firebase firebase does provides its own javascript sdk right here but uh, you would need this if you are working with Ionic because it kind of provides a wrapper to make JavaScript of uh, SDK JavaScript of Ionic look more like uh, Angular one so we're gonna do this right here so I'm gonna go back to terminal and inside a new tab I'm gonna say this thing which installs Firebase and Angular Fire. Firebase gives us the core dependencies required for Firebase and Angular Fire 2 would add those to would add the angular sort of stuff angular wrappers around it so it's done and now if you take a look the documentation is actually quite rich we can just straight go to the docs and right here inside install and setup we can see that right here it says there's to first of all install angular CLI we're gonna just skip that thing and now it says us to actually export something like this now what this is is essentially this requires us to um, make use of some sort of API keys and values and all that stuff so that Firebase can actually um, know what, what communication, what database we are communicating to. So right now we have this configuration, but I'm just going to copy paste this right here inside my Sublime project. Inside if I go into apps and uh, app module right here if we take a look and paste it right here and we say this is something like this right so now if we go back right here and uh, to initialize this if we take a look it says us in our ng module we're gonna do something like this so we're gonna say inside our ng module inside the imports one not in the declarations we're gonna import the angular fire and uh, we're gonna make use of this firebase authorization and we can just get rid of this and we can see that it's right now we are just importing the same object which it is doing from another file so you can just separate this as well it doesn't matter so next thing we have to actually include this angular fire module so there we go and this should get us started 
Now this comes because we have already installed that from the command line right here, Angular Fire 2. So this is now available in our Angular app. And we do not want to optionally provide a Firebase name, so we are good with that. And for the authentication part, you can see that it requires us to load the authentication module or the database module accordingly. So what happens is that inside Firebase, if we take a look, you can see that we have got a lot of tabs right here. And one of the tabs is the authentication tabs, right? So what this is, is essentially this makes it extremely easy to set up authentication on your websites. So let's just say if you want people to sign up with their email passwords or with their phone or with their Google account, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub or even anonymous logins. So you can enable all of or any of these and I'm just going to go with email for now, email password pair which would allow us to just send the email and password to Google to Firebase right now and it will just create an account inside its own authentication table or sort of the the database that Firebase uses the NoSQL database so right now you can see that we have got no user right here and uh, we would need actually the auth module because we're gonna make use of this authentication we, are, we can do that with database as well but Firebase exclusively provides authentication stuff so we can just make use of that why not and we're gonna go again here and paste the angular fire auth module and then we're gonna just import it right here as the angular fire auth module and this should be available throughout our app now okay so the next thing is that we have to just inject the dependencies now and make use of that in our code now for the most part you would see the same code again which you would which you could make use of inside somewhere right here you can see that it has got a user authentication docs as well and uh, right here if we see then we just want to import this angular fire auth and we can go to first of all let's just create register functionality so we're going to go to register.ts and right here let me just adjust it right there okay so we can just import that thing and with that being done what I want to do is actually import the private fire and let's just say this is angular fire auth and if we save this we can see that this right here consist of a lot of functions which consist of one of the sign-in with pop-up as well but we are just gonna make use of something like um, we have injected this and right here inside register user we're gonna say this dot fire dot auth now you can see that it gives us a lot of functions and one of them is this create user with email and password now what this would do is essentially accept two arguments which is the first one is email and the second one is password and it would return you a promise now if you are not familiar with promises then I would suggest you watching one of my videos I have the link in the description I would paste the link and you should be good to go but essentially if you just wanna take a look at uh, a quick look what promises are promise is actually just a fancy way of doing asynchronous coding right so it saves you a lot of headaches and probably buggy code as well if you're doing a lot of asynchronous tasks something like this like you're registering and login logging in and even if you're making use of firebase extensively in your applications like if you're developing real-time applications then promises would come handy though firebase actually works on observables as well but anyways right now what what's the main point is that if you pass in something like this dot user dot value or whatever we have email value dot value this dot password dot value okay so what this does is that this would fire this then function whenever we are done with that so we can say uh, this actually doesn't return anything as far as I remember but we can still check for the data 
just the data uh, we can just say something like console.log got data and something like this and then finally we can catch an error if there's any because probably there would be because again we are not implementing any sort of email functionality right now uh, email validation functionality so it would probably throw an error or we can just say got an error and uh, we can just log the error as well okay so finally what we can say is uh, yeah at this part if we see then our user is registered so if we save this and go back to our ionic app and actually what you can do is if you want to make it look fancy you can just open ionic lab as well <clears throat> and it will give you a nice little interface with all that icons and uh, UI <clears throat> which you want to take a look at if you are kind of an Apple fan or just Android fan or whatever so we can just click on this register and we can say something like uh, uh, Mayhol MPT as the username and the password being the same and we can just inspect element it right here and just open it right there so that it doesn't make the screen smaller so if I click on register you can see that we got an error and it says us that invalid email address again we are writing this as username but the Firebase expects us to write an email address so let's just write an email address and hit register you can see that we get a word register with user meholmpt at the rich gmail.com and meholmpt and uh, we got the data as back and yes we get the data back yeah okay so now you can see that we have got all the information regarding this but don't worry we do not need to do anything with this because uh, firebase once it does that it would automatically register and log in the user so now if we go back to our test project and just refresh this list you could see that our item is added and it's super easy and super convenient to create applications like this if you do not want to worry about um, the, all the back-end handling stuff and all that so okay 50% done but what about the login or login part well we would similarly implement the login thing as well we would just need to send the data back to firebase and uh, let it do its job so I guess I would just keep it keep this tutorial till here and in the next tutorial we're gonna take a look at how we can actually interactively show user this error message as well and uh, we can actually log in and show a custom dashboard sort of thing as well to the user so yeah that's all for this one and if you liked it then please don't forget to subscribe and I have my patreon link in the description as well so if you want to support that would be the best way you could go about so that is all for this one again and I'll see you then in the next one